Welcome to my latest video on how to download and install vSphere integrated containers. I'm going to take you through everything that you need to know to install a Vic to your vSphere cluster and what it is and what it does. So hopefully we'll get all that in around 20 minutes. So the very first thing you need to know is where do I find information on Vic and how do I download it? Now the place that I would start is vmware.github.io slash Vic product because it gives you a little bit of information, but critically it gives you the important links that you need. So if we click on download here, for example, and right click on the download link, it will take you to my VMware where you can basically download the OVA. Now I'll start that going now. Now you'll notice that uh, previous versions of Vic shipped as separate downloads. Now Vic 1.1.1, everything is bundled together in the OVA. That's the registry, the management UI, and the engine. And you'll see all of those in detail when we come to install them. Now other useful information that's linked off of here, uh, you can link to the documentation, which is here, which we'll be looking at a little bit later on. Um, it also links to how to get in touch with us. Now you'll see there's various different Slack channels here. So I can open the, um, uh, the Vic product Slack channel and uh, this is monitored. We uh, engage with people on this Slack channel. Um, uh, I haven't in a while, I'll be quite honest, <laughs> but we do. Um, and the other thing that you'll find is uh, the link to our actual code because everything that we do is an open source. So you can link to uh, our uh, Vic Engine GitHub repo and you can raise issues in here as well if you really want to. If you find problems, we really want to hear from you. Just click on issues here and new issue and tell us what's wrong. As you can see, I literally just raised an issue about the fact that the link to our docs is wrong in uh, the github.io page. So there you go, showing a <laughs> shining example of how to raise an issue. So let's look at the vSphere infrastructure that I'm gonna be installing my OVA to. Um, as you can see, I have a cluster right here. Now this cluster is configured with DRS and vSAN enabled. I have three hosts in that cluster, and this is where I'm gonna be deploying my OVA to. Now, as I mentioned, the OVA has the management UI, it has the registry, and it has the potential to install virtual container hosts. Now we'll get on to more detail about virtual container hosts a little bit later, but suffice to say that a virtual container host is a Docker endpoint for a tenant, right? So as an admin, you install a virtual container host to give somebody the ability to provision uh, Docker containers to this uh, vSphere infrastructure. So I have a cluster of three hosts. I have um, a couple of, a few local data stores, but I also have an iSCSI data store and a vSAN data store. In terms of networking, I have um, uh, a distributed virtual switch with a few different port groups added. And this external network is the network that I get to the outside world on. So that's a quick summary of, of my infrastructure. So let's go ahead and install the OVA now that it's downloaded. So I need to select it. So let's select this one here. Okay, so I'm gonna to need to call it something. So I'm gonna call it uh, Vic 1.1.1 OVA. Next. Okay, so I wanna tell it where to install. Okay, all right. So, uh, yep, we're all good with that. Accept that. Okay, so what data store do I wanna install this to? I'm gonna install it to my vSAN data store. So the disks it's creating here are mostly gonna be used by the image registry for storing your container images. So uh, the network, I'm gonna use my external network for um, networking. Okay, so let's, I'm gonna cut and paste my password just to keep things simple. So this is the root password for the uh, appliance. Um, now we need to set IP addresses and uh, a network config for the OVA. So that's my static IP address. Now I'm gonna 
set it up with static IP addresses because that's probably what most of you are going to do. So I'm going to do that too. So 254.0. Um, but you can use DHCP just by leaving all of this blank if that's what you want to do. Okay, so the gateway I need to cut and paste from here. Uh, domain name server IP addresses is going to be okay. Now, an important point about the DNS servers, they are space separated, not comma separated. I made that mistake once and it was an unpleasant user experience because <laughs> it caused uh, some undefined behavior, which I then raised a bug about. But just bear in mind, space separated, not comma separated. Domain search path, eng.vmware.com. Uh, and the qualified domain name of this is bcori test 11. Okay. So those are my network settings. They look correct. So now I'm going to go down and I'm going to um, set the um, password for the admin account on the registry uh, and the password for the database. I'm using the same password for everything, as you can see. I'm going to hit the garbage collection button so that if uh, when the registry boots up, it does a bit of cleanup. Um, now, that's pretty much all you need to set. You can provide uh, certificates for the um, management portal and the file server that gives you the, um, uh, the Vic Engine installer. We don't really need to do any of those things. In fact, you can do the same thing for the, uh, the, uh, the registry as well. Um, I'm just going to go with the default certificates. Uh, I'm happy with all those settings, so let's go to next and then finish. So now uh, it's going to install the OVA and let's take a pause and fast forward to when the OVA is installed and powered on. Okay, so the OVA has now successfully installed and I've powered it on. And the next thing we need to know is how do I access the services that are running in this OVA? So let's click on the console. We can see it there. It's basically telling us um, that we have a management portal at port 8282. So that's the next place that we're going to go. So we click on here and type in that IP address. Okay. And good, so we now have uh, a window where we have two capabilities. We have the management portal and we have the registry.